it's time to uh, welcome David Neal, Regional Manager with New Zealand Red Cross, and Michael McKeevity as well with the um, Canterbury Commissioner with the Canterbury Earthquake. So welcome to you both, David and Michael. It's lovely to see you here. Uh, and good timing, of course. We had another couple of good shakes yesterday. And yes, we, we built did. them. Mm, they were big too, weren't they? Yes, they were. You were at the dentist, Michael, is that right? No, I was at the barbers. Oh, the barbers. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thankfully not at the time of a, uh, an important snip. <laughs> that's right. I don't think the dentist would have been a good look. No, I know. No, actually, that, yeah, it could have been a lot worse, yeah. couldn't it? So, David, we're talking about the um, appeal fund. It's reached an enormous amount of money, hasn't it? Where are we up to? At the moment, uh, Megan, we've got around $17 million, um, and money is still coming in. Uh, so yeah, it, it is, it's a phenomenal amount of money that's been raised by New Zealanders. Mm. And this is really from their back pockets, a lot of it, isn't it? A lot of it is from ordinary New Zealanders mm. in their back pocket, but there is also a significant amount of um, business and corporate donations and, of course, $5 million from the New Zealand government. Mm, yeah, which is a, a good way to start it off, wasn't it? Yeah. Michael, yeah. I know that you wanted to say a big thank you as well to everyone that's contributed. Well, to I, I think it's really important to say thank you because essentially the people of Canterbury are in a much, much better position and going to be in a much better position because we have that fund. If we didn't have it, uh, there's an awful lot of people who would be uh, in a much worse situation than we hope they'll be because we can use that fund mm. appropriately. Mm. And uh, I think that uh, people all around the country and overseas who have actually uh, dipped into their pockets uh, to provide money for the fund have really made uh, a, a, an amazing effort. $20 million is a lot of money. Mm. It's a staggering amount, isn't it? And I, that's what I would rather hope to see the fund get to. Mm, okay, well, I'm sure that it will too. I mean, it's yes. increasing every day, really, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Yes. So, David, tell us how that process started for you with the Red Cross and, and their aspect of it. How, I mean, I know it was pretty quickly up and running, wasn't it? Yeah, Megan, we've, we've had experience with this sort of uh, fund, both nationally uh, in, in 2004 with the Manawatu floods, mm. um, where we combined all of the mineral relief funds in, in what was quite a big effort in, uh, at that time. And of course, we have a lot of special appeals that we run uh, internationally for, for major emergencies. So with that experience, we, uh, we approached uh, initially Mayor Bob Parker and then the mayors of the other two district councils and suggested that we combine all of the mayoral relief funds and all of the money that we were receiving into one fund so that there was not going to be uh, any differentiation uh, between those, uh, among those who are going to be beneficiaries. Mm. And that must make a big difference too because it's all there in the one lot now. Yes, it does. Do, I, did think, you... I think it gives a Canterbury aspect mm. to the issue because uh, there is damage in all three districts mm. and to be able to deal with them all in the same way uh, from the same fund I think really brings us together rather mm. than drives us apart. Did we receive funding from overseas countries as well, David? Yes, we did. Um, it's been pretty well publicised, the, mm. the donation that came from the Tongan government mm. uh, and the people of Tonga, which was uh, around 600,000, as I understand, and, and that in itself is incredible. I mean, mm. uh, usually the traffic goes the other way with uh, disasters in the Pacific, and I guess this, this is a way for a Pacific nation to show that uh, they're grateful for the times of adversity and the times that we've helped them and perhaps they're not in such a, a state of adversity at the moment so they saw fit to help the people of Canterbury. Mm. Um, Amazing isn't it? Yes Getting and Australian that. Red Cross have also been running an appeal so Australians have been able to donate and the Australian government very generously um, um, uh, passed legislation to be able so that people who contributed to that could get tax relief on, on their a contribution, which is not normal. I so think right. I, I think also that uh, you notice that uh, local governments made quite quite an effort right around the yes. country. Mm. You see gifts coming in from uh, other districts around the country, and uh, I really think you've got to take your hat off to that um, sort of generosity mm. because that really is uh, ratepayers' money, and those ratepayers are probably giving twice. Good on them. Thank mm. you very much. Yes, exactly. Mm. A big thank you. Can we just talk about how much has been spent so far, David? To date, we've uh, we've spent just short of $2 million uh, in actual payments and in the pipeline we've got close to another million of, uh, of applications for funds so that's, that's around $3, $3 million and uh, we expect with the current immediate uh, grants that, we, that the Commission has uh, established, the, the hardship grant, the uh, emergency grant and the damaged home grant, uh, to pay out around $5 million with that. Okay. Uh, so we're on track to do that. Um, the payments are, are being processed um, 
quickly where we have good information and not so quickly where we don't have good information. And I guess that's the message that we want to get out there today, isn't it? That the money is available, but having that right information, particularly for the hardship grant, is really important. Yes. So let's talk about the three different grants that are available for our viewers. When we, uh, when we started uh, on the Monday after the earthquake, um, by the end of that week we had the emergency grant set up and that was for people who, who essentially were out of their homes for, uh, because of the structural damage to their houses mm -hmm. and, and they were the ones that were in need of some immediate support. Um, very quickly after that, uh, the following week I think, Michael, we, we, we established the um, hardship grant because we were already starting to get feedback from uh, from from various sources, particularly through the social service agencies, that there were people who were sig significantly um, affected financially mm. and, uh, and and undertaking a, a lot of medical issues and medical problems, which were costing them. That's so right. that uh, we established the hardship grant, and then we uh, we we, re we got some further information and further feedback uh, through the various uh, recovery offices to say that. Uh, there are a lot of people still in their homes, but we're living in quite difficult circumstances because they were having to go elsewhere to shower, they were having to take kids to school on the other side of town. All sorts of costs were being in incurred. So we opened up the, um, the damaged home grants for those people who were still living in their homes, but were incurring significant costs that are not going to get covered by by insurance. Mm, that's exactly right, yeah. but it's, it's still you know, very hard for them. With the hardship grant, how specific do we need to be as, uh, to, to prove the hardship? Well, first of all, it, it, you have to be able to show that the hardship that you have suffered uh, was caused by the earthquake, mm. and, and that has to be re you know, as clear as possible. Mm. I mean, we're not just handing out um, up to $1,000 to, to everybody that applies. We've got to have some, uh, some structure to what we do, mm. and we've got to have some transparency to what we do, and we've also got to have a, a reasonably rigid uh, uh, process to, to make sure that people meet the criteria without it being so rigid that the people that really need it <laughs> don't get it. So it's, it's a, a fine, fine line, balancing it? act, yeah, mm. it really is. And um, I, uh, at the moment the hardship grant is the one that is, is taking the longest because people are just filling out the form and sending it in. There's no no supporting documentation even though right. we ask for it. Right. Um, so you know and if they need that. They need mm. that, otherwise we will go we, we don't just straight out decline them. We, we put them into a, uh, into a processing system where we have staff calling and verifying, but that can take time. Mm. I think it's important to say though that the hardship grant, in actual fact, is designed for a variety of purposes. Mm -hmm. People who have lost their business, for example, who have lost uh, their ability to uh, carry on with their normal lives. People who, for example, uh, uh, are unable to meet outcomes because of the earthquake are all issues and I mean it's so wide mm. that we have to be rec able to recognise that hardship comes in a number of ways uh, and um, I think we're being generous as to how we handle that and we should be too. That's so the message is provide as much proof as you possibly can Absolutely. when you're submitting these applications. Um, David and Michael thank you so much it's been really good to get an insight on that and, and I know we'll be having regular catch ups with you both as well because of course this is an, an ongoing um, fund which yes. will be you know taking quite some time so Happy thank you, thank you very again. much we appreciate that.